Hello, I'm Kira and this is Polymer Clay TV and today I'm going to show you how to decorate a really fun holiday ornament or gift tag. This is a wooden ornament or tag that you can get at the craft stores at this time of year. You can usually find them online too. So they're pretty easy to cover with polymer clay. Then you can paint the back or you can even just use them as a form and make your polymer clay thick and then just pop it right off the wood. But I'm going to use the wood. And the first thing I'm going to do is paint it. So I'm going to use some color shift in the green flash color. And that's going to contrast nicely with my clay, which is souffle cherry pie, which is a really nice red, red color. And the paint, since it's acrylic paint, is actually going to help my um, polymer clay stick to the wood. So I'm going to paint the whole ornament. That's how I'm going to start. And then I'm going to silk screen the knit deer pattern onto the clay. Now, I've rolled this moderately thin. This is a number three on my Atlas pasta machine, so it's the third setting down. And I don't need all of this clay. So if you're someone who doesn't like to have a ton of scrap laying around, I really don't because then I end up not really using it. You can eyeball how much clay you're going to need before you silk screen. So this is enough to cover my ornament. So this is the section that I'm going to screen. And if you've seen our videos on YouTube on our channel, Polymer Clay TV, you've seen tons of videos on how to silk screen. So I'm just going to screen it with the paint and let it dry and then we'll do the decorating. While I'm waiting for that to dry, I thought I'd use one of these mandala snowflake-like texture stacks to make a little design. So I'm going to just press this onto some pearl clay. And then I'm going to cut it out. So I have a piece of deli wrap. And my little kite cutter. So I can see where I'm going to cut and just make a nice little beveled shape here. And then I'm going to use a border deco disc, this one with the flowers, and make some border strips. And then in the center of those border strips, I'm going to use some hot fix cabochons. These work really well in the middle of the flower on the Hamsa. This one has Hamsas and flowers. It works really well right in the middle of this, so I'll show you what I mean by that in a minute. So when I'm using these strips, I like to condition my clay and roll it into a snake. And it's best on like a glass or tile kind of work surface so that you can roll things out easily. And then I like to use the, the disc itself to make a nice uniform snake. So I'm rolling uh, the clay on the back, the acrylic back of this strip. And I want this to be sort of thin, so I will pinch off the ends as necessary and then just keep rolling it until it's thin. That's pretty good. And now we can go back to the non-reflective surface. And I'll put this here and show you. These are clear so you can see through them and see what you're doing. So I'm just going to line it up with those flowers. Press and rock a little bit so that it flattens out and really gets up in those flowers. And then release. And I've got this really nice textured piece of clay and I'm going to use some Jewel Shimmer pigment powders to highlight that design. I'm thinking 
the turquoise for some reason. I like the sort of non-traditional Christmas colors. I like the idea of doing that. So I'm just going to use my finger, tap it off a little into the lid, and just swipe this along these flowers. And I'm not going to put my crystals in the, or the, the cabochons or whatever in the middle yet until I lay this onto the ornament. So that way you'll see, you'll see why I do that. So that's ready to go. My little, this guy, let's see what I want to do with him. I'll give him some coloring too, maybe in blue. So I want that snowflake to stand out. Always keep some tissue around to wipe off your fingers. There we go. So my ornament is dry, everything's ready to go, and now that everything's sitting here, it's going to come together really quickly. So I'm just going to lay this over my wood piece and kind of press it on. I had a couple little blobby spots because the, um, the folk art paint is a liquid paint. And if you're familiar with silk screening, you know you have to be kind of careful with the liquid paint um, getting it on there. I usually use a paintbrush rather than a squeegee, and my silk screen was ha it had a couple little um, little parts where it wasn't firmly pressed down. So you live and learn, but it's okay. I'm gonna decorate, so I don't care. It'll be fine. I'm just gonna lay it on here and be gentle so that it peels off easily later. It also gives you the ability to turn it so that you can bring the clay to your blade instead of having to twist and turn your arm. For those tight areas, hopefully you have something like an X-Acto blade or a scalpel lying around so you can get into the small hole type areas. And now let's flip this over and see what we've got. Very nice. Let's poke that out. Save the scraps for something else later. And I'm just going to round the edges with my thumb. So that it's not all pointy. And like I said, at this point, if you wanted to, you could remove the clay from the wood form and just bake the clay tag and not have to use up the wood. So that's up to you. And that's kind of up to how um, thick you made your, your clay piece. So now I imagined this would go down here, sort of in the bottom of the design, and that I could put this here here, maybe curve it a little bit, how you decorate is totally up to you. So I'm going to slice these off at the corners here, and then what I do with the um, cabochons you'll see is going to make the whole thing stick together, so that's extra. Just press down, make sure that everything looks nice on the outer edges. Finishing is important, so always make sure you're checking 
to make sure things are stuck down and they're not pointing out and that you don't have any raggedy edges. Okay, so now I'm going to use these. And I'm just going to tip some out onto my surface here. And if you've seen me do this before, I have this little tool. I really like it. It's called the Crystal Katana. And it just has a hard wax tip. And the reason it's good for this is because I can pick up the cab and put it in here and press it down all with that tip. Once I get these in place, I'm going to press them down more firmly with another tool because that's what's going to help my clay, this border strip, stick to the base that it's sitting on. But it's so easy to pick up your little crystals and cabs with the tool so I really like it. It made my life a lot easier because I do this type of decorating a lot. It's my favorite thing to do. So now you can decide if you need more of the crystals. We These come in 20 different colors at this size so I'm thinking I might put some around some blue ones or something around this. I'll, I'll have to think about that in a minute. But you can always take another tool at this point, which we have this, um, this is like an awesome little pressing tool and it comes in this set of three, which look like this. These are the do anything tools. And this one in particular has these little flat pressing ends. So I'm just gonna use that to press these cabs right down into the middle of the flower. because my finger is too big to do this without smushing the little flower petals. So this is just a quick and easy way to make a really cute ornament. I hope you enjoyed it. You can decorate so many different ways. You could even put a name here or a word. You could write Merry Christmas 2018 if you wanted to make them for your family. If you want to make them for your friends and family, you could put their name on it. You could do it for a baby's first Christmas. So many different things. It's super easy, and these ornaments are, are cheap and abundant at the stores right now. So have fun. Come to PolymerClayTribe.com. It's our community. Share what you made, and uh, we'll see you next time on Polymer Clay TV.